Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is my experience. And it can only be from what I've seen over about the last 10 days with the TP-Link Omada gear. And is it sending my data outside of the United States? So we've got to set up some kind of ground rules here. This test was when you look at you know, what we could have done was kind of rudimentary, but it would give us a good idea, right? If these devices were reaching outside of the United States, we would, we would at least see that. A lot of comments in the last video said they don't have to reach outside of the United States. And you're absolutely correct. Any vendor that has servers in the U.S. could be sending data to those servers and sending it somewhere else in the world. That's not something that would be unique to TP-Link. I also asked TP-Link, uh, they went and they read some of the comments. And, um, you know, some of you thought, well, you know, maybe they sent you gear with a different firmware and all this, and we chatted back and forth. I do not believe that um, uh, TP-Link sent me Omada gear with a special firmware for reviewers. I just, I, I don't, I don't have a big enough impact in this world for them to go through all the trouble that it would take to do that. I, I, I don't believe that. I will also tell you that I never witnessed while I was checking in any of the TP-Link Omada gear reaching out to IP addresses outside of the United States or what the UDR or the, I'm sorry, the UDMSE has classified using its database as US IP addresses. We'll pull this up and we'll take We'll take a look at some of this. So I even went as far as, I don't know if you can see it back here or not, but I even went as far as instead of having everything behind the TP-Link firewall, I actually took everything and plugged it directly into a Grandstream switch. And then the Grandstream switch, so, so essentially we were seeing all the devices across the board. It wasn't natted to the Omada firewall. I still didn't see anything that was kind of out of pocket. Now, you can choose to believe whatever you want. And yes, this is not an experiment where, you know, we replace certificates on these devices so that we could, you know, capture TLS traffic and see exactly what was going on. That takes a lot more time and a lot more work than I am capable of doing at this point. So if some of you are interested in doing that, I have a spare set of TP-Link Omada gear. And if you pay for shipping and you, you know, sign a contract that says, if I ship you this gear, you will replace the certificates and do all this and, and either, you know, send me the write up to do a video on, you know, show me the proof, let me test it. I'm more than happy to do that. Some of you are, are probably equipped to do those things. At this point, I am not. This is a very simple, Is the, are these devices reaching outside of what my UDMSE is classifying as United States IP addresses? And the answer is no. Uh, so here is my, my UDR, or I'm sorry, my UDMSE. Uh, and you can see I've got some top clients over here. I will tell you that my PC reaching out to the Microsoft Cloud has tried to reach out several times. Just my Windows 11 PC has tried to reach out. The latest one, I think, was Germany. So I have no idea why my Windows 11 machine is reaching out to Azure IP addresses and URLs that are in Germany. I have absolutely no idea. Nothing surprises me with Microsoft. I will tell you that. Um one thing that I did, uh, if I go to blocked, you're going to see that the U UNVR uh, instant has actually been trying to reach out to Taiwan to do some some pinging um, is what I, I think it is. I um, mean, yeah, and you can see like my my PC is trying to reach out to all types of of Azure. Um, I have no idea why my machine in the U.S. But like I said, Microsoft doesn't surprise me. But if we go through this list, you know, uh, so my Grandstream switch, my 7813P uh, grabbed an NTP server in Canada. And so it was blocked. I've got absolutely no, no quarrels with this thing getting its time from Canada. It totally is 
you know, um, and it looks like it tried to get NTP from another country once it couldn't get it from Canada. NTP doesn't really uh, raise raise any issues for me. But the point is, the TP-Link gear has not tried to reach out to anything. And when I go to Blocked, you don't even see... You don't even see any of the TP-Link gear showing up in the affected clients. So if I go to clients devices, you can see a couple of them showing up here. Nothing has hit that has hit that blocked list. So you're gonna have to draw your own your own conclusions from this based on the testing that I was able to do. My conclusion is that I think that some of you in the comments were right. If any company wants to send data, they could send it to US servers and then offload it in the background where we can't see it. I think you're absolutely right about that. So this is something where, you know, you have to talk about risk reward, right? Are you willing to, you know, run the Omada gear? And there are a lot of people actually running Omada gear. There's a lot of people running Omada gear. Just go out and look at the, you know, the Omada subreddit and go out and look at the forums. I mean, Omada has a pretty pretty big installation base. That being said, I also have customers who have TP-Link Omada, and we've never had any issues. In fact, the software keeps getting uh, better and better. And so I'm not going to, at this point, tell them to rip it all out. Now, if for some reason, you know, the federal government here, you know, does go ahead and ban, I think if they ban something, it's going to be the home routers. Uh, I don't, I don't know that they'll be, you know, ban Omada, but even just banning the home routers may leave a bad enough taste in people's mouths where they're going to want to go ahead and, and get rid of the Omada gear too. But at this point it's working. The software is getting better. I'm not going to tell my clients, you got to rip this out tomorrow. Right. And these clients also run full security stacks on the PCs, managed security, uh, on all the PCs and devices behind it. So if, if there were something going on uh, on the workstations, I would I think somebody would have would n have noticed it or let me know. But if if you know if anyone else has done a, a study a study like this on Omada gear, not the I know there's a video about a you know a teardown of one of the the cheap TP-Link home routers that was you know before they made their split and all these other things. But if anyone out there has any information about Omada. Uh, you you can find my contact information, you know, reach out, put a comment in. I'll reach out to you. We'll figure this out. Like I said, I'm more than happy to send a stack to somebody that wants to get in it, into it, replace the TLS certificates, and see exactly what is going on. Um, but at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and here in the next week or so, I'm going to do a TP-Link Omada full stack build, uh, and we're going to put it in place and we're going to run it and see how it compares. And I'm also going to be watching things and I, I will have certain things in my network that are, are blocked off because I, I do think that even though we're going to go ahead and do the video and we're going to do the 30 day challenge, I still think, you know, I, I should have a, a healthy uh, awareness of, of what's going on. And if something crazy does happen, be able to, to pivot. Right. So let me know what you think about this down below. Uh, go over to my community. Let us know what you think over there. Let me know if you're using TP-Link, if you're going to continue to use it, if you've pulled it out, who you're switching to. There are some other vendors now in this space where we've got single pane of glass who are coming on strong. I had no idea until about the last week that Fortinet actually had this. Now, I'm not a Fortinet. Um, Fortinet's not my first go-to, Right. We manage a lot of Fortinets. We also tear out a consider considerable amount of Fortinets and Sonic Walls. And depending on what we need to do, we either put a Juniper SRX device in or we're using uh, Grandstream or we are using um, Ubiquity. And, you know, like I said, I also have customers who are using TP-Link. So... It's, it's one of those it's one of those things this is where I'm at I didn't see anything where they were reaching out directly outside of the United States so we you have to draw your own conclusions but let me know 
down below how you're going to, you know, take care of this going forward. Let me know if you're interested in seeing the, the full stack video. I am going to go over it, you know, and, and I've got also a grand stream full stack video, a ubiquity full stack video coming out. Uh, I should probably revisit Synology. And if Fortinet's watching this, I would be interested in seeing the, the Fortinet single pane of glass or any of these companies who have a single pane. I'm not interested in, in Meraki and Cisco actually reached out to me and they want a phone call to basically know why we use everybody but Cisco. So that's going to be an interesting call. I've got that scheduled for next week. They don't want to put their questions. Um, they don't want to put their questions in writing. I, I, uh, on my lunch break on Friday was going to do a call, had to take care of something else that was high priority. Didn't take lunch emailed them, said, hey, I'm not going to make this, but if you send me a list of questions in writing, and they're like, well, phone call's probably better. Okay, that's fine, which means, you know, who knows what they're going to say, who knows what they're going to ask, but uh, I am about, you know, transparency here. You know, TP-Link did provide this hardware. Ubiquity provides me hardware. Synology provides me hardware. Grandstream provides me hardware. And you've seen me call vendors out on this channel uh, when it's been, appropriate. And sometimes, you know, they, uh, they will, you know, kind of set you away from the table a little bit, but I'm not gonna just come out and tell you that everything is, is peachy if it's not right. So, so it's one of those things. Let me know what you think down in the comments, you know, draw your own conclusions. Let me know how you're going to proceed. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate, affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, if you want to rip out your TP link and put something else in or rip out any other vendor, or you just want to get a second set of eyes to make sure everything is good. If you uh, need voice over IP, storage, security, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. Let me know what you think about Amada down below. And, you know, all the comments, you know, that were made on the last video and the comments that are going to be made on this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.